to really, really, really make it happen in the back, the back stretch. Well, the guys who make it really happen are the grooms and the exercise riders and the hot walkers. Those are the guys that really make it happen, and um, they're the most important part of the whole the whole thing. I mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, like everybody thinks that it's like the trainers and this and that. Yeah, we all do what we do. I'm an assistant, but if it's not for my grooms and and my hot walkers who they're the hard, they're the real hard workers in this game. I mean, these are the ones that like deserve more credit than anybody. To be honest, I mean, they they're there at four o'clock in the morning. They're there until seven o'clock at night sometimes when we're running in the last race. I mean, these are the guys that deserve more credit than anybody. I mean, they're hard working. They do their thing, and they deserve all they deserve all the credit. I mean, a horse doesn't get fed on his own. The horse doesn't get looked after on his own, you know? I mean, these guys take care of them like they're their children. And that's, and I'm so lucky that I have three incredibly good grooms. I mean, I only have 15 horses up here right now at Saratoga, um, but our stable is over 100 horses um, at Monmouth and here. And if it's not for those, for those guys, we're nothing. You know, it's very, very important. They are the most important. And the excise rider too. I mean, he's important too. But to me, the most important person in the entire barn is the groom. The groom is the number one guy to me. Um, so out of all the places and the different tracks over the years, where do you say the best pool of grooms ever came from that you know? Best unfortunately, horse? this business has changed so drastically. I mean, I've been in it now for 37 years. Grooms used to be, you used to be able to get like, I mean, these guys were like unbelievable. Like they knew what they were doing. You never had to tell them anything. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I don't know. I think a lot of it's got to do with the border deal and the visa deal. Um, Long gone are the days when, and I don't want to sound um, racist in any way, shape, or form, right. but the colored guys back in the day were the best. You mean like South Carolina guys? And the, and they the were Kentucky just <laughs> the best. Yes, I yes. mean, these guys knew how to rub horses. <laughs> you know, I mean, they would live with them. They would. They knew how to rub horses. Right. They they were brilliant. Well, now we've got to a different stage now, and unfortunately, I, I mean, I don't understand why we can't get an American to come and be a group. I just don't get it. Um, now we're, we're bringing in everybody from, from South America, and great, I mean, they're good, they're great guys. I mean, they work hard, they do their jobs. Um, I, as I said before, I'm very lucky in the respect that I have three that are absolutely brilliant at their jobs. Brilliant at it, very dedicated, no issues, nothing. But I do know that there are a lot of people out here, trainers that do have problems finding good staff, you know? And if you don't horsemen. have good staff, yeah, horsemen, exactly. That's a very good word, yeah, horsemen. And, and the guys that you just named the three, man, um, what's their names? Um, Apolinario Perez, Giovanni Avila, and Ricardo Fernandez. Hopefully the real players will get a chance to um, come and speak to them also. You know, and I also have a guy that unfortunately couldn't come to, to Saratoga with me, who's been with me a long time and will be back with me with, at Belmont, is a guy called Melfi Ardiano. He's another loyal, great groom, good kid. Well, that's wonderful. I know that it takes a good staff to make this thing happen. You know, so that's what we're here to do. Give our guys our roses now. Yes. You know, it's like, and they deserve it. And, right. and unfortunately, they don't get enough credit. Right. And I think this is this is very appreciative, in my opinion, as to what you're doing here to, to give these guys a little bit of spotlight, because all everybody sees when they go to the to the races, like all these thousands of people that you see over there, all they see is a horse, a jockey. They don't realize what goes on back here to take care of these things. Could you just give us a little brief um, briefing about your um, Canadian background and some of the good horses you work with? Well, I was born in England, 
Um, I'm the I'm the son of um, Hall of Fame trainer Roger Atfield. Um, I worked for him for a long time. Um, I, I've been around some very very good horses in my life. I've been around with approval, his Vestia, Play the King, um, LED, LED um, Trick or Treat. I mean, there was some. I mean, some very, very, very good horses. Um, and Roger, I feel like Canada, Canadian racing is like the man, right? He's like um, some of the biggest racers. He 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 holds the record for the amount of Queen's plates that have ever been right. won. He also owns the record for triple crowns. Um, triple crowns. Um, Canadian. Canadian triple crowns, yeah. Right. Um, but to be honest with you, to me, the Canadian Triple Crown is just as hard to win as, it, as the American one because you have to go um, to PETA, dirt, turf. You need a horse that can run on all three. Now, back in the day when his vest here and with approval and Pete Ski won it, um, it was dirt, dirt, turf because we didn't have to PETA back then. But, would now the synthetics, synthetic, okay, yeah. Okay. To Peter's synthetic, yeah. That's what Woodbine is now. Um, but back in those days, it was you had to run on the dirt, mile and a quarter on the dirt, mile and three sixteenths on the dirt at, at Fort Erie, and then you go back to Bel to Woodbine and run a mile and a half on the grass. So if you if you couldn't do both services, you were uh, you weren't you weren't going to get it done. So, yeah, but I, I have been around a lot of very, very good horses. And I've been around some very good horses for my my employee right now, my employer right now, Kelly Breen. I mean, Miss Sky Warrior was as good a horse as one of the, as good a filly as I've been around in a long, long, long time. You know, I mean, she was favorite for the Oaks. Um, she was a very, very good horse. And of course, now, luckily, I mean, I'm in a situation right now where I'm around one of Possibly one of New York's favorite horses in in New York right now, Forenze Fire. Okay, okay. You know, I mean, I I get to train him every single day, and I get to see him every day, and he he's a good horse. What are you most happy about in his training right now? What am I most happy about with in his training right now? With Forenze? Yes. He's just Forenze. He is just. Forensic. He knows what he's doing. He knows his job. Um, he's trying to become the only the fourth horse in history to go to five straight Breeders' Cups. Wow. Um, he went as a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, and we're trying to get him there as a six-year-old. Um, let's Yeah, let's hope it does. I mean, but he's... Uh, <laughs> Forenze is a very, he's a very special horse to everybody. I mean, he has a little fan club in New York. I mean, if you go, like sometimes at Belmont, I'll, like when he runs, um, I'll see the odd person with a sign with his name on it. Was he the horse who ran second to um, American Farm one time? No. no. Or Justify? No. 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 He, um, he's a sprinter. Okay. Um, but he did run in the Derby. And he didn't run any good in the Derby, but he did run in the Derby. Um, He's a very good horse. He's a homebred by Poseidon's warrior who hardly anybody's ever heard of. He's out of a mare that really wasn't any kind of race mare and he's won two and a half million dollars. Wow. 